Tiger Height, and I'm here to make NWA Power and Pro Wrestling Majestic again. And once again, just good matches, segments that make sense for their next big event, which is somewhere in Florida. I can't remember the name of the building, uh, but they're really packing it because they haven't been there in a while. So that's cool. And it's starting to develop like it's a pay-per-view, even though their TV tapings. Freaking awesome. It's exactly what it needs because right now there's not a pay-per-view coming up for NWA yet. But this was good. I like this show. So up first were the Southern Six taking on the Heat Seekers. Now, what I love about the NWA is that not only do they bring in different faces per show, but these two are familiar with this brand. And they explain to us who they are. Because at first, I'm like, look at these jobbers. But they're not jobbers. They're four-time NWA World Tag Team Champions, like, 15 years ago. I had no clue. And guess what? I like the Heat Seekers. I mean, their name's incredibly generic, but I like this. It was a good opener. Obviously, you can't go wrong with a Kerry Morton match or an Alex Taylor match, and it was fun. It was Green Whistle, which is essentially a, um, a spin-out, sit-out uh, Mitsunoku driver for the win. I liked it. Full thumbs up. Right after that, we have a Southern Six segment. Once again, this is the one where it's out there in the public, so I'm going to count it just like any other segment that they would do in the ring. Uh, it was a nothing. This was to try to promote the shows in Florida, but I th there's no direction to it, and it's kind of lame because these guys are a good promo. It was just a little campy this time. It gets a thumbs down, to be honest with you. I like it sometimes, a little bit of campiness, but this was just a little too much for me. Up next for the NWA Women's Television Champion, Maxine Impaler defending against Missa Kate. I legitimately believe that Max was just going to eat her alive, but Missa got some offense on them, and I was quite happy with it. Uh, it was a fine match overall. It was a lariat for Max to retain, out of, you know, for obvious reasons, but Missa did not look weak in this match whatsoever. She actually got some offense, and Max at some points was a little bit like, did you really just hit me, bitch? And so I was digging it. I'll give an Orange Cassidy thumbs up. So this is essentially is going to be the main event at those Florida shows, uh, I think at the end of the month, where it will be EC3 defending the NWA World Heavyweight Champion against Jack Stane. And they promoted it with this segment, and I loved it. I thought this was a really good back and forth. It made sense. And this is how you book a... This, where you book the match first and then work the program around it. And it, this was done very, very well. I liked it. It gets a full thumbs up. In a non-title match, Blunt Force Trauma taking on Magic Inc. Uh, Magic Inc. actually has some momentum going into this. And if, you know, obviously if Magic won, they probably would be the first contenders for the tag team champions. Right now, those titles are directionless because they beat Knox and Murdoch, who were the clear contenders three times. I like this. I thought this was a fun little match. It was a loaded glove shot from Aaron Stevens for the victory. And I really liked the assistant. I cannot remember her name. I think it was like CJ or something like that. Uh, low, low blowing Aaron Stevens. And it looks like this is the start of a program. Is it? I don't know. Uh, even with like the loaded glove shot, clean pin, well, clean relative. I thought this was a good start to something. Uh, it was obvious that Magic Inc. hit their finisher and actually was pinning Blunt Force Trauma, which I'm happy about as well because they looked strong. They looked good. They have, they have great, just great fluid motion. It's, it's a lot of fun to watch them. I'm going to give it a full thumbs up. I liked this. There is potential to forward progress great stuff, and I'm all for it. This segment was actually kind of annoying. Uh, pretty empowered. It. I was so annoyed by it. I didn't even know what they said. It gets a thumbs down and a fuck you. And in our main event, non-title, Kenzie Page and Taylor Rising. This was a good main event. This was a very good main event. Kenzie Page, you do, I mean, if you see her in the ring, she doesn't look like anything special. Just a wrestler. But she actually starts working. She plays to the crowd really well. I mean, I like Taylor Rising too, but it was really Kenzie's star here. And it was a Kenzie cutter for the win. There was a back and forth. And, uh, Taylor Rising actually kicked out of some big stuff that got Kenzie frustrated. And I really liked how she played to the crowd and played to the ref and everything there. And maybe we're going to see that. Now, Samantha Starr is the number one contender after winning the match at the uh, Samhain pre-show. 
and that's going to be the match of that Florida show. But I could see uh, a Marikova or Taylor Rising being the next contender for the women's world. Will that be the case? I don't know. But this gets a full thumbs up. But that was power. Let me know you thought about not only my review, but power in the comments down below or right over here next to me. If you do want to check it out, it's still on their YouTube channel. And as of right now, we have no idea what the CW situation looks at, um, especially given NXT. But I'll keep up to date with you guys regarding that. Uh, subscribe to the channel, become a patron, get hats. All of that great stuff will be in the bio or in the description. And as always, be majestic.